So this is two potatoes, two medium potatoes, diced up. You want to have about two cups of mashed potatoes out of the potatoes that you cooked, and you want to reserve that cooking water. And here is our water. So this is the three cups of water that I reserved from the potatoes. So we only need one teaspoon of yeast. So we're going to do this in a food processor. So we're going to put the yeast in there. We're going to put the three cups of water in with the yeast. And you want to make sure that the water is warm. You don't want it to be hot, but warm. So I would say about 110 degrees is about right. Or if you're, you make a lot of dough, just use your finger, you'll know, OK? In addition to the all-purpose flour, we're also going to use this. This is semolina flour. So I've got five cups of the unbleached all-purpose, and I've got one cup of the Durham semolina. So you know now not to use this. Then, of course, we need salt. But here's the thing about salt. Salt will slow down the work of the yeast. So you don't want to put that in right away with the flour. I know a lot of people do this. But really, you should really put it in with the last addition of flour. So that was about two cups of the mashed Yukon Gold. And I don't know how much flour this is going to take. It's all going to depend on what this liquid will absorb. So making a bread or any other kind of dough, it's really in the hands. You'll, you'll know if it's right. So now we'll let that go and mix that up gently. So I'm going to start by adding three cups of this flour. Again, I, I'm just giving you an approximation. I'm saying five cups, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. Five. And a little extra. OK. So now we want to add, with this, the salt. I told you to add the salt at the end. So one and a half teaspoons. You need salt in the recipe, of course, but don't put it in at the very beginning. All right, so now we let this go. And now we're just going to cover this. Cover this, and you let this rise, oh, till it's double in size, about 40, 45 minutes or so, and then you'll be able to go. So now you want to brush your pan well along the rim, okay, like that. And then you just take this and dump. I'm trying to make it easy for you. OK. So then you just kind of play with it. Wet your hands and press it out. You don't want to take all those air bubbles out of there. It eventually will find its home, but you just want to spread it out. So now we just want to, you know, randomly put these cherry tomatoes in it. The beauty of this is you're using simple ingredients. And, you know, at this time of the year when I make this, of course, I, I use the uh, tomatoes that are coming out of my garden. So, uh, yeah, so this would be the time of the year to make this. If you didn't have access to fresh tomatoes, you could use canned tomatoes for this. I've seen people do that, too. And you can buy the Castel Vetrano either with the pit in them, but I'm too lazy for that. So you, but you can also get them pitted, whole pitted. So that's, that's what I would suggest. And you can find these in a the grocery store, or you can find them uh, online somewhere. So you put in your olives. If you didn't like green olives, you could use something else, but it wouldn't be as authentic. I'm trying to stick to tradition, because traditions are dying, right? So I'm all about sticking to tradition. So you add, they're starting to look like the Italian flag, right? <laughs> OK. So we're just going to give that a sprinkling of salt. And here is the oregano. Some people will add pecorino cheese to this, sheep's milk cheese. So then a little a dousing here of some extra virgin olive oil. OK, so then you uh, cover that. Your oven is on at 425. And in 20 minutes or so, you're ready to bake this. 